over here. I got me in trouble last time with my head. So talk to him. Yeah. Oh, and this I guess entering your third week of camp. Uh, yeah. What's the general like? Are you guys moving to a point where you identified who can help you this year? Yes, it's getting closer. You know, we told the guys it was like this last scrimmage is kind of like a separation scrimmage. So the guys, we put it on the, on the guys to say, okay, we gonna have we gonna have off before the scrimmage. So it's up to you to study the playbook and have a game mindset going into the scrimmage. So there was a lot of good things that happened, and so we started to put the pieces of the puzzle the puzzle together. So it's all coming together. How was that second scrimmage for you guys? What was it like for you? I mean, it was good. You know, it's always we had some things we got to work on. You know, we did some situational stuff, so it was always good to teach off of that. And you know, we put the ball on the minus five and the plus five. We put the ball on the fifty to twenty five and. Is always just situational. So the whole part of them just learning the scheme is also learning situations and different parts of the game and why we do different things. And like today was two minute. So just going through that and walking through it and understanding why we calling it. We was down by three with a minute and five left. The offense had one timeout. So just understanding, they getting to understand what's in my mind when we're calling it. So situations is always good. Which players or position groups <coughs> separated themselves the most in that scrimmage? You know what? Um, man, it was a good. It was man, it was good by a lot of guys. To be honest with you, what we ran into, to be honest with you, is some good close competition um, in a lot of those spots. So you know, we got to just make you know some of the decisions that's best for the team. And the good thing that we see, we have a lot of depth. So I don't know if it's a big separation on you know one position and the other, but you can see that we have a lot of depth, which is a good thing. Coach, what are some ways in which you're better this week than you were last week? <clears throat> That's a great question. So I, I do think our tackling was better. Just our angles to the ball. Even, even during practice last week, we're not tackling, but just we talk in terms of owning the hip. You know, guys not being out of control. You know, some people talk about come to balance, different things like that. We don't want to talk in terms of just come to balance because some teams, some kids think stop. That means stop. You know, so we talk about owning the hip. So as you gather and you, you get closer to the ball carrier, just being in that position to own the hip. Being in position, understanding coverages and understanding your leverage and understanding that 12th defender, which is the sideline. We can use that that person as well, never miss a tackle. So just understanding those different things. So I just think last week was a lot better just owning the hip and being in position to make tackles. So we saw a picture on Twitter recently about Nakai, Nakai in, in the recent, most recent scrimmage. People have been talking about him all camp. So how would you say he, how would you say he performed during the scrimmage? And just what has he done during this camp that just is getting so many people to to highlight him? Yeah, I just think for, for him, he's just a, he's a smart football player. I mean, he understands like what we're trying to do. He understands leverage. He does things to put himself in position to make plays. Very pleased with his tackling. Um, his tackling has been really good. To be honest with you, there's a few freshmen out there that you, you can see that's like, okay, they are willing tacklers. They have a lot of courage. This, I mean, just tackling alone takes courage. So, you know, we're throwing a lot at him, um, different positions, you know, and just him picking it up is all, I mean, it's just a good thing to see. So, just looking for him to continue to get better each week. Coach, could you talk a little bit about your two freshman defensive ends, Giannis and Jamal? Yeah, both of those guys have a bright future. Um, and, you know, I'm just trying to get at some point, you know, Coach Ingram may be coaching from the, from his rocking chair because those guys got a chance to be really good. Um, but very pleased with their progress, very pleased with, um, you know, how they go about their business. You know, KT is very quiet, very, very quiet. He's very serious about his work. Like, he's just a perfectionist and everything he does, man, he's just serious about it. And so quiet, like I, I walk in the lunchroom, he's sitting by himself because he's dialed in. So we got a rule now, like you can't sit by yourself. So we got to, if you find KT, go sit by him. Because he's just that type of kid. He's just so focused. And then Jamal, you, you know, he's in the room. Like, Jamal likes to talk and, and all of that good stuff. And, you know, he's another kid that has a bright future. You know, we go in and I say, anybody want to pray? You know, it's optional. They just start praying out of nowhere. <laughs> so it's just, uh, both of those kids are fun to coach. Um, I'm happy that they're here. Where would you say is the biggest battle right now? Is there a position, maybe safety line, right? Where you're, you know, just kind of want to see how the guys do this upcoming week? Yeah, I, I think, I mean, just linebacker, really. You know, just, it's, we have a good, we have a good problem. I say problem, because a lot of those guys are showing some really good things. They really are, like, they're doing a, a really good job. So now just trying to just get the right seats, right tails in the right seats in different situations. And we, have, we actually have a linebacker this year for each situation. You know, we have a you know, short yardage goal line. We got an enforcer in that, and we got guys that can cover. We got guys that can run. We got guys that can blitz. So now just putting those guys in the right seat so they can be able to make plays. With two scrimmages over, what's kind of the focus as, as kind of get towards the end of fall camp? Yeah, the focus, you know, really 
As you said, defensively, I, I do think we have enough enough pieces. So, you know, we threw like the whole library at them. So now, you know, they, the heads are probably spinning. So now just okay, just trickling down. It's okay, this is what we're gonna call, this is what we're doing. At some point, we're gonna start getting into game prep, so it'll definitely slow down from there. But you know, just the guys, like today, the main focus after practice was just to pursue working ourselves in shape, like football shape. I know they've been running all summer, and that's great, and they're in shape in that sense, but for us just doing a pursuit drill, you know, at the end of practice, you know, most people would do the, the old school pursuit where the guys would just run and tag off the guy. What we do, we set up four barrels. You know, we run plays, and from, you run from this barrel, you go to the next barrel. It's a new, it's a new defense, new formation. They got to communicate. Then the next barrel. So after they get finished with those four, we turn around and come the other way. So you get an eight-play drive, and you have to think while you're tired, because you, you out there and you juiced up, and you, you, you know you got all this energy. But when that ball is, you know, they moving, you know, you really see like who who's really dialed in and who's really a football player. Last. Last week you talked about how you, you built your, your relationship with this new group of linebackers. Can you talk about the linebacker relationship with each other, of course, with all the new additions? That oh, man, they, they, they're they close. Like, you just you see the guys. I think, I, and it starts with Jeremiah, to be honest with you. Jeremiah's t taking that leadership role and, you know, kind of took all those guys under the wings. And he know how I operate. He's been here a whole year. So he just knows me, you know. And I also got my GA in there, Deshaun Davis, who I coached at another place. and. He, he understands who I am as well. But just watching those guys when they're eating at lunch, they're eating together. You know, we had them over at the house, and I'm just kind of watching just kind of how they're mingling and how they're getting along, and whether we in the swimming pool or fishing, you just see those guys. They really like each other. That's a good thing. You know, it's no ego. You know, they, they actually root for each other. Uh, and then when it comes to playing, one thing as a coach you always have, you have that film. The film never lies. So, you know, even if you're a competitor and you want, to, you want to play, you can always go back to that film. But the relationship, I'm very, very pleased with how close they are. How would you describe the development you've seen from Corey Thornton? Man, Corey Thornton, like, we, like, to be honest with you, we have three, we have three starting cornerbacks. He's a guy, like, he works his tail off. He really does, works hard, and ball is important to him. This is his third season, starting corner. You know, playing a lot of football, so looking for him to take his game to the next level. Very pleased with CT. I think maybe you said the last time one of the players that you, you have like production points for each scrimmage or practice. Can you kind of? I think maybe Nikai had <laughs> talk at the first scrimmage. Can you kind of talk about what goes into that? And maybe could you share who was the top if you yeah. want to? Who the top performer from the last yeah, so, scrimmage was? So the production points you got. You got. You know, if a kid does plus or minus, if he does his job, if he makes a tackle. You know, those are the pluses. If he's an assist tackle, interception, a sack, those are the pluses. Now, you may have an offsides. Different things makes the whole production point go. Um, but this time, we was more situational, so we didn't really do it like a scrimmage production for this for this uh, past uh, practice on Sunday, but I mean on Saturday. But the production points is pretty much did he do his job? Did he, was he in the right alignment? You know, effort. You know, we give e extra effort as well. We give big hits as well. Um, all of that is all of that is all in one. What are the biggest questions you have left unanswered at this point in the camp? Yeah, you know what? Just the, I would say really just putting the pieces together. That would be the question. And that's from my seat, putting the right pieces together as far as the right guys in the right seats. Because we're we doing some mingling different ways. We got guys playing two positions so they can learn both. And we got linebackers at two positions learning both. So we got D linemen doing different things. So just really all just putting all the pieces of, pieces of the puzzle together. That talked before about you know how you worked with Gus on for for a very long time. I wanted to ask, how has working under him, whether it's just in general or for so long for a long period of time, made you a better coach? You know, just the attention to detail. You know, the coach is very detailed. You know, coach is a, he's a football coach, so he's locked in on balls. So you can just see how he just move around and when he's locked in on ball, man, it's just the small, the little things, you know, it, it could be, you could take player A that just ran down on kickoff, right? But he was off sides. Naturally, like, oh, I mean, he was on sides. But being with coach, you see, okay, well, shoot, he's the first one down there. He's giving effort. I can teach him how to be on sides. You see, those, those, just those small things that a lot of people don't look at. And like I said, the attention to detail and just being really dialed in on your opponent and knowing exactly what these guys are running. Because most people are creatures of habit. Then I mean, they, the first 10 to 15 plays may be a little different, then they're going to just do what they do. Just understanding how coach break down film as well. Does a great job.
Coach, Sunday night you took to social media to remember Lynn Cheek, a uh, UCF fan that passed away. Could you comment on why you, why you did that? Man, that's, that's a great question. I mean, she, I mean, she was like an awesome person, lit up the room. Like when I first got here, you could just tell she loved UCF. Like, I mean, and then the first time I saw her right before, like the women's, we had like the women's day with Miss Christy Malzahn last year. And just her, I remember just taking a picture with her and bringing her up and she broke everybody down and she lifted the whole room up. You know, you couldn't even tell she was going through what she was going through. You know, and then I saw it and I saw it on social media yesterday and it's just like, wow. You know, and it just takes you back to man. Every day is important. The people you around are important. Football is that's great, right? But it's the people you interact with. You know, the people that you make feel good, and that's what she did for us. Like we can, it could be a down day when you see her. Your day is like, I can't, you know, just instantly lifted. So, man, prayers, prayers to her family and her friends, prayers to her. But we know we have someone rooting for us in heaven. You know, so we got a cheerleader in heaven. So just a super person. So, good. Thank y'all, guys. Appreciate you. <clears throat>